Well, good evening and welcome to the first uh, virtual public night of the Sheep Hill Astronomical Association. My name is Mike Hogan. I'm president of the Sheep Hill Astronomical Association. And uh, again, just welcome to our public night. Um, to start off some quick uh, housekeeping uh, points, if you have questions um, during the night or some comments to make, if you click in the lower right panel of your screen, there should be a uh, participants icon. If you click on that, you should see an icon for raising your hand. That'll put a little blue hand up on your window and we'll see that and we'll try to get to you as soon as we can. We wanna answer some questions. Um, I guess I might also mention once we, we go back and we start our meeting, if if, if you're not actively speaking, you know, if just um, maybe you wanna keep yourself on mute, that'll keep the, the background noises down to a minimum. Um, so thank you. Uh, we were hoping to share some remote telescopic views from one of our members this evening, but the weather has uh, kind of had other ideas about that. So we're gonna have to postpone that for, for next time. So we're gonna try to go over or present some um, techniques um, for viewing and photographing objects and you know, the, looking at the sky and photographing objects in the sky. And hopefully that'll be of some use to people and of, of some interest to you guys. Uh, we'll also cover some of the current things that are uh, available to see in the skies these evenings. And maybe we'll be able to uh, answer some astronomical related questions uh, that you may have and help you out with that. Uh, again, we are streaming live over on YouTube. Um, so you are, with the, and it is being recorded. Um, so by continuing to stay on, you're consenting for that. If that's a problem, you can, hopefully you'll stay, but if it's a problem, you can maybe turn off your video. That's, that's your option. Um, but I just wanna let you know that. Um, there is a link to the YouTube stream that's up on our Facebook page. Um, and I think there's a link also in the chat uh, that everybody can see. So hopefully you can take a look at that. Um, and that'll be there for, for viewing um, later on. The, uh, on YouTube also, you can search for us under uh, Sheep Hill Observatory on YouTube. And that should, that, that should allow you to find uh, the stream. Uh, for those of people that are new to Sheep Hill, uh, we normally have uh, a public night at the observatory on the third Friday of every month, uh, weather being nice, uh, again, because of the current situation and the social distancing and quarantining, we're not able to do that. So we're trying to share uh, with the public uh, in this manner. Uh, up, at the, up at the observatory, we have a very nice 18 inch uh, Newtonian reflector that provides, you know, really, really great views of the moon, planets, uh, stars, deep sky objects like clusters and galaxies. So uh, we hope uh, we hope to see you there uh, when things get back to normal and uh, we have some nice weather. So let's look forward to that. Uh, just a little history. Sheep Hill began as uh, the Booth Astronomical Club back in the 60s. It was started by uh, Les Booth, who was a principal at Booton High School. Uh, a lot of active amateur astronomers and telescope makers. And around 1968, they started to, so they determined that they were gonna build a permanent observatory for themselves and for the public. And uh, through the donations of a lot of time, labor, materials, and money, it led to the uh, creation of the building that we currently enjoy up on top of Sheep Hill. Uh, that was completed in uh, 1973. Um, in about nine, 1999, there was another fundraising episode, uh, ep excuse me, another fundraising effort uh, took place and that completed in around 2000 with the installation of the current telescope that we have up there. So again, Shah, you know, we try, we are dedicated to um, public outreach. It's very important to us. I mean, we enjoy, we're all amateur astronomers. We enjoy it ourselves and we enjoy uh, sharing it with the public and you know, sharing the night sky wonders with uh, as many people as we can. Um, that's, I think, covers everything just about that I wanted to say. Uh, I'm gonna unmute people. And I guess we can, we can continue. Again, I'll ask again, if, if, if you're not, um, if, if you could maybe mute yourself until, you know, we have something, you know, if you have a question that we wanna, you know, allow you to ask or something, or if you're one of the presenters, we just ask you to maybe mute your microphone to help keep down uh, the noise. Uh, and I guess we were gonna lead off, right, with, with Gary, who's gonna talk about some, uh, how to get maybe some better pictures of the moon and other objects. Yep, yeah, we'll go Gary. there when you're ready. Um, let me know and I'll share my screen. Gary, you can take over anytime. 
in St. Mary's, in St. Mary's. So you can see a telescope on there, right? Yep. All right. All right, so we're good to go. All right, so um, again, as Mike said, my name's Gary, and I've been with the group for about five years. Um, tonight, I want to talk about some types of telescopes first, and uh, also explain how to use a cell phone to take a picture. Something as easy as a moon, very simple to do. And um, I'll also show you some, uh, some images taken with a standard Nikon digital camera and um, some images with a CCD camera. All right, so first up, we're going to show you this is a reflector telescope. Uh, just the basics on it. Go um, the observatory actually has a reflector telescope. And basically with the reflector, your light will be coming in. You've got a mirror down on the bottom. And that light will then reflect up into a secondary mirror here and out into your eye. All right. Um, these are, most of the time, this is the kind of scope that you see. Uh, they're, they're very easy. People build them and uh, they put them on cheap mounts. They call them Dobsonians. Uh, mm. But again, the most bang for your buck. Because in the telescope, what matters most is the size of the objective lens or the mirror in the bottom. So if it's a, like the scope in the observatory, you have an 18 inch mirror that collects a lot of light, right? And uh, most of these telescopes, the, the main cost is the mirror itself. So it works out really well. Um, I have to drag you guys over here. This one here is a refractor. And with the refractor, refractors are very expensive. Uh, usually the glass that's in it is really good. You've got a large lens up here. The light will pass down at the here through a series of lenses and out into your eye. All right, these here, the uh, the scope itself, we use it a lot for a uh, if you want something clear like the moon, uh, very crisp images, I guess you can say. Um, again, um, a good six inch will probably cost you like a thousand dollars, if not more, as opposed to a six inch Newtonian, which will only run you maybe three or four hundred dollars. So these here, they're very precise, very precise images, very precise, uh, good for astrophotography and whatnot. But um, I have a telescope like this, and I will use it primarily on the moon um, and the planets. And again, the images are just very, very sharp. Next up, what they call a Schmidt screen. Uh, these scopes, again, are very expensive. And it's actually it's a combination of the other two telescopes. Um, and this one here, light will come in. It is a corrector plate here. Um, light doesn't focus at the same process the red, green, and blue do not all focus in the same area, the corrector plate will correct down. Here's your, here's your mirror, your primary mirror. Um, and there's also a hole cut in that mirror. And there's a hole there because the light will bounce off the mirror to a secondary mirror and then come back out and up into your eye. These, uh, these telescopes, again, good. They're good all around telescopes. They're good for astrophotography, good for stars, planets, galaxies, you name it. They're well rounded, but again, there's a lot of a lot of cost involved in that type of that type of telescope. Uh, um, Gary, Gary, real quick, um, it seems like every time you move your mouse, the audio kind of cuts out a little bit. I wonder if it's um, it's if it might be blocking your microphone a little bit. If you okay, can... very good. You know what? We'll pick the laptop up. Yeah, thank. You. All right, so gone. We okay now? Yeah, good. All right, so I'll go with the right hand. That's fine. That's probably something on the left side. Uh, but I propped up the scope, um, the, the scope, the, the, uh, the laptop. Um, there's also another variation of this telescope, and they call it Maxitov. And I happen to own one of those. And that is the Maxitov. Now, um, th these pictures that I'm going to show you that are coming up are all basically taken with this little telescope here. It is a, um, it's a five inch Maxitov, and it's on an equatorial mount. I need that kind of mount because that mount will actually compensate for the rotation of the Earth. And I'm able to take images of stars, planets, whatever the case may be. I mean, there's no trailing, so the images is is not blurred. Um, let's see what else we have on there. All right, so getting into the, what we we're going to initially talk about here too is a cell phone. So I have my Android device, and this actually the image that you see there is actually the moon with this Android device. A um, couple of ways I guess to go about it is. Of course, once you press camera, you can just zoom. You can just zoom into something, you know, and uh, what I would suggest is just be leaning, uh, leaning against something that's not going to move, like a tree or a house, something like that. It'll limit the amount of shaking that you have in your body. And you can then, 
take a better image and it won't have to worry about it uh, blurring in any way. Um, if you point the telescope, I'm sorry, the, uh, the camera directly towards the sky and towards the moon, the moon will probably look like just a big, um, just a round ball. There's no, no detail on it whatsoever. And that's just your camera and the way that the, uh, the, the exposure system works in the camera. So there's a couple of things you can do. One is basically just tap the camera on the image, which would be just say that's the moon. Um, and you'll come up with it where you can actually slide back and forth on there for a contrast. And as you make that image darker, you will see the background gets darker and also you will get some detail on the moon itself. At that point, then you can take your exposure and you, you get something similar to what you have here. Um, another way, and I know with my Android device, I basically just swipe the phone and it goes into a pro, you have a professional mode. In professional mode, I can set my actual exposure times. That's got my white balance, but I can actually set my exposure times moving an icon back and forth. So in other words, if it went from like a thousandth of a second to one one twenty fifth of a second, um, you'll see the moon get brighter, get darker, and just move the slider to the point where you're happy with what you see, and then just click the button, and you've got yourself an image of the moon. So it is. It's actually it's very simple. And the main thing is just your body shakes um, as you zoom in. You'll see the shake a little bit more. And then that would be a blurry image. But if you're leaning against something, you should do pretty well with it. Um, going back to my other telescope, I was able to take the same phone. Okay. Uh, Gary, image. if you could, uh, sorry. Yeah. Um, good. Let's hi highlight your video. So you, I mean, can you uh, demonstrate uh, something like that on? I don't know if that was visible to everyone. Um, uh, you were trying to demonstrate uh, on your camera. Is that right? Um, you were you were sharing the screen, and uh, you know, I don't maybe not everyone saw that. So let me try and uh, spotlight your video. Okay. Okay. So, or if you either that, or if you stop sharing for a moment, uh, and then and then, and sort of demonstrate. We had one question asking if the, that sort of slider, the brightness slider, was on the um, uh, on an iPhone too, and it all. Hey, let me. But, would it be easy uh, if I stop sorry, sharing? For a moment, yes. That's fine. Um, let's go back a second. Meeting console. And move to the top. Okay, so yeah, back. there we go. Okay. So again, there's my Android. Let's see a picture of me. Okay. I press on the Android. Okay. I now come up with a slider where I can make things dark and light. Oh. Okay. And that would be it. Um, I guess to, to try to explain is your camera, any camera, basically the digital ones, they'll try and um, when you point it at something, it has to take everything in that frame into consideration when it considers how to make an exposure. And um, that's basically, it. you figure you've got this big black night sky and you got this little moon. So the black sky is gonna overrate and it's just, it's the moon itself will just be outshining everything else. Um, and that is why I don't have, I gather, do that, I can do that. And you can see how it lights up because now it's going to the hallway where if I hit the wall, the hallway now oh. gets kind of dark. Yeah. I can move this back and forth. Wow, that's cool. And that's how you work on that. That's how your contrast will be for the moon. And then it's just a matter of just pressing your button and you've got yourself an image. Um, I don't know if it's the same on iPhones, but my Android, swipe it and I come up with a pro mode. Professional. And on there, I can set exposure. On the bottom, there's a dial. And again, light to dark. That's just telling me how fast the exposure is going to be, how fast that shutter is going to go. So basically, you put it, the moon would be there. And once it was good, doink, and I would have myself an image of the moon. <laughs> While we have that there, can show you an adapter. Okay, the adapter that I just, and I just got this too. I figured, let me see how it works. What will happen is my cell phone gets connected to it as such. Okay, um, and this side would go over the eyepiece. As I screw down on it, it will be like a compression fitting and my camera is right inside. So my camera can actually see into the eyepiece and I don't have to hold it, it would just sit there and I could just press. I don't have to worry about blurring anything. 
any kind of vibration. Wow. It works wow. out really well. Wow. Uh, but I would suggest using it on the moon only because um, if you ever see, look at something through an eyepiece, the moon is big, the eyepiece is nice and wide. When you get to something like stars or planets, uh, planets in particular, they're basically, they're small. So we need to get an eyepiece for a higher power to get into there. And at that point then, it, things, it, it's very difficult to line it up exactly. You'd have to get a, a, another mount and uh, makes life difficult when the object is very small and the camera field of view is very small too. Pat, we okay on that one? Yeah, I think yeah. Good. Oh. Thank you. No, no, no problem. Just thank you for pointing that out. I can leave that alone. Um, I'll go back to sharing. Mm -hmm. And that was the adjustment I had just showed you. Again, here, that's the adapter. And as I tighten this around the eyepiece, it's more like a compression fitting. It'll actually attach to my telescope. At that point then, it's I just tap when I'm ready to go, uh, when I want to take my image. Uh, the telescope actually does the focusing, not the camera itself. Hmm. So that's really good. Move on. All right, so again, using that type of an adapter, this image here was taken through my telescope. So I have an eyepiece in there. If I'm gonna look inside, I can see the moon nice and clear. Again, the camera lays on top and the snap, and there, there is my image. Um, the one thing that I'd like to show too, oh, you can look super, at the detail. and you can still see the detail. All right, so it's a lot different than just um, the cell phone taking it on its own, as opposed to the telescope, uh, the, uh, the cell phone working with the telescope. Where are you going on this trip? So, let me just get that out of there. Get my images back to where they were. For some reason, I lost where I was. Hang on. So this is your cell phone attached right to your telescope. All right. All right now I should be back. Yeah. Okay. It's attached directly to to the telescope itself. But again, the moon is nice. It's simple because the moon is there. Uh, it's it's very large. The telescope you can see it in the field of view. So it's like it takes up the whole field. So um, minimizes me having to just make adjustments, very small adjustments to try to get it, you know, as if I were trying to check out one of the planets. It makes it, it's, it, again, the adapter makes it pretty easy to do. Um, but again, the moon is very simple. Um, I guess one thing too, to talk about too, is sometimes if you're trying to do something over and over and you're not doing too good, you get discouraged. At least here with the moon, you should be able to nail it every time. You know, once you understand how the exposure works, you're good and then you can move on from there to see what's what and move on to planets or maybe using a higher power eyepiece to try to get maybe to zoom in on something. Um, but also too, if the camera, the cell phone is connected to the telescope, you can actually just zoom in on the screen itself. Just using your normal, your normal zoom to get in closer to an object. Mm -hmm. So that would make life easier for you too. Here I just kind of zoomed in a little bit. So it's the same image as before. Uh, I should say same setup as before, just that I decide to zoom in. But again, a lot of detail in that image uh, and that's of the moon itself. So um, pretty neat. All right, so moving on, let me just move this out of the way so I can see everything we need to see. This image here, it's, a, it's an image of Venus just that I took a few days ago within the last week. And um, now that was just, that was taken with a, a digital camera through my telescope, okay? Um, now, just to discuss a little bit, I guess you see Venus is in a nice crescent phase and uh, Venus and Mercury are what they call inferior planets. They pass between the earth and the sun. Um, because of that, this is why we will see the crescent phase. And that's what you see now. So if you went outside, um, if you you hit our site once in a while, you'll see Dan giving these talks about the astronomy and what's going on in the sky 
Um, in a recent one, he did mention um, Venus. Um, it is very bright. As soon as the sun sets, you can see it. And the naked eye, it's very the brightest thing out there, aside from the moon and the sun itself. It's reversed. Um, but the Venus is going to go between, it's actually going to leave the night sky. So if you see it, it's another couple of weeks before it actually will fade from view. It's just going to drop, go behind the sun, um, and then we'll see it come back in the early morning. I believe if you're checking it out on uh, May 21st, um, you will see another star nearby. And that actually, that star will be the planet Mercury. So Mercury is pretty mm -hmm. elusive. Nobody really sees it too often because it hangs pretty close to the sun. But this time around, it will pass by something noticeably, noticeably bright, which is Venus. So if, uh, with your naked eye, you should be able to see it. Uh, with a telescope, even better, or even binoculars for a wider field view. So the sun is to the left of Venus here? Yeah, no, um, the sun's going down, so that's going to be to the right. Oh, the, image, you have to, um, the image here may be inverted. Okay, that's what I thought. Only okay. because, yeah, de depending on the telescope that I had used in there. Gotcha. Okay. Because I believe I have a second image coming up on there, too, and I believe that was it. So you can see here, depending on the telescope setup that I have, um, here I just put a filter on it because the planet was so bright. I figured I'd let me see. Venus isn't really blue. It just <laughs> looks pretty. <laughs> That's cool. But That's yes, really we can, cool. We can filter. I can filter things through my telescope, um, through the eyepiece. I can attach red, green, blue, any specific colors. Again, it's just something that caught my eye. I figured, hey, why not? Um, but I believe that image there was taken through a 16-inch telescope. Uh, no drive, just my camera, just looking through there. And saying here, snap this, and off it went, and that's that's what I got. So it worked out pretty good. Fantastic. All right, let me see what else I had now. I um, I mentioned earlier I do have a Nikon uh, digital camera. So with my Nikon and uh, my zoom lens, here I'm able to get the Moon and Venus in the night sky. Again, very simple. Um, Digital cameras, I mean, don't be afraid to get out of the auto mode. Um, you can use aperture mode or manual mode and just set your, your settings on there for your aperture and your, um, your actual exposure time. And you can get an image similar to this here. Um, you see the moon is the first quarter, or first, it's a thin crescent, I should say. Um, the nice thing about the image too is you can see what they call earth shine. The, the moon, that piece of the moon is not visible, just the crescent is. But we see the rest of the moon because of the actual the sun is reflection off of the earth onto the moon itself. That is called earth shine. And you will see it with your naked eye. Um, not every time, I guess it depends on the time of year because summertime, I guess it gets kind of hazy. So you're not, uh, not too easily seen, but um, it's a nice thing to see, nice thing to photograph. Uh, again, it's something very simple to do with a, with a digital camera or any camera for that matter. I like that shot, Gary, that's pretty cool. It is, it, it is it's very nice. I kind of wonder too, sometimes I'm like, you know what, what if it was really cloudy, not just above me, but like cloudy on the earth, does it, do we get more earth shine or not? I, I don't know the answer to that. You know, does it, is it the I amount do, of earth actually, shine yeah. dependent upon the actual- A lot, a lot of cloud cover? We'll yes. Sure it'll yeah. be brighter, yeah. Yeah. It's reflecting off the clouds. Wow, cool. Here, same digital camera, I just decided to zoom out. So I get a nice, nice picture that, that nice, you know, that like twilight blue, I guess you can say. Mm. And the moon with her shine and here's Venus. It's over here, I believe it's just a plane. Somebody's flying by. <laughs> so it just happens to be, it's okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure I'm on target with what I have to talk about as I go. But again, just to, as a reminder, Venus is on its way down in the sky. So it will be setting earlier and earlier each day. Um, and it will then go in behind the sun and then become a morning object. So if you get a chance to see it now, it's, it's a nice time to go out and just take a look at it. Um, don't need a telescope. You can use binoculars if you'd like to see the crescent. Um, if you have a telescope or if we have a public night and it's still uh, available uh, for us to see, that's a great thing. Um, hey, and, hey, Gary. Yeah. Sorry, Mike, can I interrupt you a second? We got a question. Um, sure. From someone, one of our friends, asking, uh, there was a faint white dot in the last photo of the moon and Venus. I'm not, I'm not sure if it was the, this one of the prior, and they were asking if that was another planet. I'm not sure that I see that. I don't know if it was the prior. This one here. 
What, what, what? Oh yeah, maybe yeah. That doc there was a plane. Just, just a oh, moment. Okay. Let's, let's do this, uh, Nancy. Can you, you can answer uh, ask your question? Uh, can you unmute Nancy? Well, there we go. It looks like there Jennifer answered it, and that that dot was a plane. And in this this other picture that you're showing right now, oh yeah, I see yeah. where your arrow is pointing. That double dot, that's a plane. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In the oh, last good. Picture, good eyes. You got yeah. good eyes. I saw that too. Not me. Wow. <laughs> That's a good way to tell planes, by the way, when you see those multiple lines and especially if they're dotted, that because that's the strobe lights. In yeah. the last picture, though, there was a dot halfway between the moon and Venus on the right hand side, halfway up and very faint. Hang on a second. Okay, yeah, over. Whoops. Maybe let's see. If look at, star. look at, look at. Oh, wait, I see it. I see it. Yeah. Directly down. Yeah, this would be stars. Yep, there. Is I there can see stars? it. Wow. Yeah. That one. She got good eyes. <laughs> Maybe it's a good computer because my eyes are not good, and now it looks blurry. <laughs> yeah. Actually, while while we're talking on that too, you can even see Venus was more like a half moon. The camera's pretty good on the resolution. Yep. Sorry to distract. From oh, no, no, that, that's okay. Good. That was good. Very, very good eyes. That's that's good. That's yeah. good stuff. Well, good. I've been resting them all day because I had definite eye strain from using the computer and the iPhone too much. We're gonna recruit you. Yes. <laughs> that's okay, so we had that there. Okay. Now, where was I going? Let's see that there. Crescent shape. Okay. Okay. So. We'll move on a little bit now. This image here, uh, this was taken with my CCD camera. And I took this one a couple of nights ago. Um, we were having a, a walkthrough session and I just wanted to see what I can come up with, what I, you know, just in case weather kind of beat me up tonight, I can't go outside and do what I really want to do. But um, just to give you an idea, a, a CCD camera is, uh, it's like a, um, a digital camera on steroids. Um, if you're familiar with, like ISO settings, and I know the digital cameras go into like to the thousands, like 1400 or 6400 on the ISO settings. The CCD, what oh. it takes a minute for that camera to develop an image, the CCD can do in seconds, mm. right? Again, it's like a, a digital camera on steroids. Um, mm. A lot of these chips that are in the CCDs are cooled to near like freezing temperatures, and they become very, very sensitive. So the image here is of a cluster, and that's M3. And uh, the cluster itself, in a dark sight, you'll be able to see a haze with your naked eye, but this image taken with my small little five inch telescope, that's maybe 20 seconds on the image itself. So that, that's really good. And uh, it just, it takes time. You have to have a mount, you have to have a good camera, good telescope. A lot of things have to come to play in order to get one image. Um, and the image is not processed. So when the time does come that we do have a, um, another virtual public night and we can stream some images, images this is what you'll be seeing. Um, you see these images like in magazines and whatnot, and you'll have all these colors and whatnot. They're processed. The image here, again, is not. That's why you won't see it. it's not this completely dazzling image. But as the processing is done to the image, it will be get, it becomes more and more dazzling, I guess you can say. But uh, again, this cluster here is what they call a globular cluster. The globular clusters hang around the halo of our galaxy. And uh, this one here is 34,000 light years away. Just to give an idea, because we're talking, I brought up the light years, um, a light year, one light year is the, the distance light travels in one year, and it's six trillion miles. So this stuff's pretty far away. And what you're seeing here, even though it's 34,000 light years away, this is what it looked like 34,000 years ago. So it's a long time. Now, again, same camera, same telescope with the, the CCD. And this here, you can see, is a galaxy, and that's M66. That's your galaxy. You can see some spiral arms, hopefully. But this one over here, now you're 35 million light years away. Um, I guess one thing I'd like to just to, to point out is in the springtime, um, where we are in the galaxy, where we are in our orbit, you can actually see out into the universe itself. We look out to the constellation Leo and Virgo, and uh, you're looking outside the galaxy. You're not looking into the plane of the Milky Way like we do in the summer. Here you're seeing out. So 
we can get these galaxies that are extremely far away. And again, 35 million light years, it, yeah, it sounds pretty far, but we can go a lot further with, uh, with galaxies. The other thing, just again, I'm just looking through some notes on there. Um, although we can't see the entire galaxy in there, but if you went from one edge to the other edge, you're talking about 100,000 light years. So if you decided to turn on the light bulb on this side of the galaxy, 100,000 years from now, they'll see it on the other side and they'll be like, wow. Yeah, and my wife would still tell me to turn it off. <laughs> and this one over here is just a, it was an image of a, um, a star. And it's a, it's, for me, I like it because it's a double star. So again, hence why we've got both. What you see here and here are just pixels, top pixels in my camera. So they're not anything, there's, there's nothing to worry about. Again, I didn't process the image whatsoever. Um, what I'd like to just, I guess, just bring up is you come up to the observatory. Uh, we always, we look at some different kinds of stars and whatnot, but um, a lot of the stars, the majority of the stars that you see in the sky are actually what they, they're double stars, meaning there's at least two in the system. Sometimes there's three, four, sometimes more. Uh, this one over here is what they call a binary star. The stars are actually gravitationally bound to one another and they'll move throughout space as they go out as a pair. So they'll move wherever one goes, the other one will be nearby. No, 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 no. If you eat, you eat in some- the, uh, the system here is about 110 light years away. So a lot closer than the galaxy was. But this star here resides in our, in our own galaxy. And it's very simple to see, it's naked eyes. The actual primary star, the brighter one, is visible to our naked eye. And just my last object. I got two more to go. Um, just, just because sometimes people will ask us when we're at the observatory. Um, this here is an image of the aurora borealis. Um, mm. I know we live here in New Jersey, and people say, "Nah, nah, you can't see them." But yeah, actually, certain times the sun is very active. If um, a couple of websites will point you to it and say, yes, it's time to go take a look. And I'm able to actually see the Aurora Borealis. You'll see pillars of light. This one happens to be a purple color. And again, the same night, I've got that one. So you can see what I see here in my eyes when I'm looking at it is actually like a grayish color. The camera picks up the color. So I've got green and purple here. Why did you take these? <laughs> These were, um, these were going back a few years, and these were taken from Harriman State Park in New York. Nice. What time of the year? I believe I'd have to check the actual image and when it, when it actually was. Um, for me, what happens is uh, I keep an eye on space weather, uh, spaceweather.com, and um, they'll tell us when there's a blast leaving the sun coming towards Earth. Because the aurora is actually, uh, there's a solar wind that's always pelting Earth. And when the sun lets out a large blast, they call coronal mass ejection, it will interact with the Earth's atmosphere. And sometimes it's intense enough that we here can see, we can see it down here in New Jersey. Usually this stuff is visible more, um, you know, the poles of the Earth, maybe as far down as like Sweden or Norway. They're more common. They're very nice, you a nice purple color there. Yes, yep. I, I go up to Northern New Hampshire every summer and I, I've seen this up in New Hampshire. Yep. I was in New Hampshire about six months ago and they said maybe, but I'd taken some images of the sky and I just didn't get anything, anything specific. Well, yeah, I go up to the, the, up to the, to the White Mountains. It's very dark up there. Yeah, that's where we were. Really nice. Yeah. All right, so I put this image in there. Uh, this is Comet Swan. This isn't mine, this is someone else's image. All right, but I just want people to know that this comet is actually coming. It's coming up from the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, once the moon leaves the 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 morning sky which will be about the 19th of this month you should if you get binoculars and a map you can probably see this you can probably go to a dark site and see it with your naked eye um at least hmm. the halo this area here the tail you'll see this is done with a camera got a very long tail yep yeah very long um and uh again it's going to be something that's very early in the morning i don't know what's going to happen to it if it's going to get any brighter dimmer I'm not very certain right now. Comets can be the last one that we had with Comet Atlas. They said, yeah, yeah, it's going to be naked eye brightness. And it never really attained it. It actually broke up. So put this one over here again, early morning. Um, that's what we're going to be seeing. Uh, Gary, it looks very green. Is that normal for, for these sort of things? Or I believe, yes. This one, the comet itself, oh, there was there's a, an, an element that's in it. I forgot that. 
That escapes me. I know I'll remember later, though. I know but yes. comets and, and shooting stars, big ones always have that turquoise color. Depends on, yeah, it depends on what it is, I guess, what's inside the, whatever it is yeah. that's coming into the it's atmosphere. Green color? Gary, is that what you were wondering about? The green on the comet, yes. It's a specific yeah. gas. Pat, do you remember, is 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 I want to say oxygen, but I'm not. No. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, no. I think it can be uh, uh, metals. Uh, oh, sure. I know what. Copper, it, maybe? Or? Copper yeah, does give a green color. Uh, copper does, but I don't think it's. I don't think it, that's that's no. the, the thing doing it here. I, I, mm. um, yeah, I'm not sure. Could that be a filter? May giving it that color? No, that's the right color. Oh, that's if, the right we're, color. if we were a filter, you'd you'd see it in all of the. Yeah, uh, exactly. Oh, that's a natural color. Yeah. No, I've seen a lot of sh big shooting stars, and they do tend to be turquoise. So, we can take a look. I can take a look on there, and I can always post it to what it is. Um, I, I just say that because I'm in a, years ago when I was in the Navy, I had a bridge watch and I saw three green exploding meteors out at sea okay. in succession. And uh, it was pretty impressive. I mean, it lit up the whole pilot house. Wow. wonder yeah. if it could be methane. Yeah, uh, it's not possible. I will check. I will. I'll look into that one there. When I find my answer, I will be able to do... Um, I just again that color it escapes me. There was an element. And this is I, I, I did a quick I did a quick Google and it was saying carbon nitrogen. Nitrogen. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. It's pretty cool. But again, I mean, because we'll talk about it too. Um, the tail is on there because again, the solar wind. That's the sun pushing the wind, solar wind mm -hmm. pushing against the comet, pushing the gases out. Um, what's on the comet is solid, it sublimates, and this begins to give you your tail. You can even see there, it's a galaxy, little galaxy. Yeah. Cool. Oh, wow, yeah. Yep. Wow. But it's hey, neat. Gary, yeah. it, which way is the sun in relation to this? Is it to the it's, left of the image or to the-, to the, the sun would go in this, it would be towards the left side because okay. the, the, tail is, the tail is going out. Yeah, um, solar, solar wind is what creates the tail. So, the, and it's right. and that's still inbound, correct? It, towards the yes, sun. Yes, and it's still inbound. Yes. Okay. He brings up a good point because um, years ago, when Hale Bopp came into the skies, and it was in the early the morning skies, um, it was actually leaving. I guess it was the direction you can see the tail come up first, and then the comet. So yeah. it's it's strange. You'll see a tail shooting, and the comet looks like it's going in reverse, but it's actually the so like Pat's saying, it's the solar wind pushing against it. And that's what gives you that long tail. But the direction of the comet would give you another tail. You have like an anti-tail or an ion tail. Um, but with that, that's uh, that is my, my last image there, Mike. So if you want, I will unshare and we will go back to you. Great, great. Thanks, Gary. That was that was really great. Thank you. There's some great images and some great uh, information too, by the way. Um, and some good questions from everybody. And actually that was, you know what, I'm gonna take I'm going to take a chance. I'll take everybody off mute. And if anybody has any questions um, that they want to ask at this time, I think I did. All right. Yeah, everybody, it, it, oh, a lot of people have their, themselves on mute, which I do appreciate. But um, <laughs> if you have a question and want to take yourself off mute and uh, ask that now, that's uh, this would be a great what time for that. What direction did you say that tonight's... Um, West, it'll rise in the west southwest about 10 degrees above the horizon, and then it's going to head towards the northeast and it'll be up for about six minutes. West so, southwest, yeah, heading where did you say northeast? North, northeast at 1027. So it should be visible for six minutes. At Frank, some point, have... at some point, it might disappear because it'll go into the shadow of the earth, which is kind of cool. Frank, do you have any information as to how bright it's supposed to be? I mean, is it going to be you know, like as bright as Venus or? Yeah, I would say that. It 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 just you know it's going, you'll see it'll go steadily across the sky. Yeah, I, I've, I, I've, seen, seen, I've seen it made transits, and it's a, it's always a beautiful sight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there's a nice application um, you can get uh, for uh, Androids or uh, Apple phones. It's called Heavens Above. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, that's a nice one, and it, it has. Uh, you can put your what area you're in. You, it uses GPS to determine what area you're in, and it'll tell you it'll you know when the ISS is going to be visible for you. 
and it'll it'll tell you you know what where it'll rise where it'll set uh, its maximum altitude and brightness it's it's a really nice little app and it's it's loads of information but one of the things it does is track the iss one space you weather to, used to have a, a i don't know if they still do had a had a uh, spot where you could click on and it would give you not only the iss but any other satellites that were going to be visible <laughs> that night and give you a rough idea how bright they were and where think, they were going to show up and yeah, when. that's definitely a resource and again heavens oh. above heavens above tracks a, a number of it's called NASA flybys. If you go go to NASA flybys, you can register. You put in your email, your uh, zip code, and they'll send it to your phone or to your email. So Frank, yeah. NASA flybys is that you have to go to the NASA site to register yeah, that? Yeah, that... go to NASA and they'll tell you when it's going to come by. Yeah, okay. a great time to be alive, huh? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, waiting for the twenty seventh for the next uh, manned space shot, American space shot. There's uh, two launches tomorrow, or not one one tomorrow and one Sunday. Oh, uh, what uh, what, what are they? What are Atlas they? Atlas Five's going up tomorrow, I think. Where are they going up from? Canaveral. Uh, Canaveral, yeah, okay. and SpaceX has one Sunday. What time? Uh, ten o'clock, I believe. Ten. Uh, the window is starts at eight, I think, for the Atlas Five tomorrow. Okay. So, any um, any other questions then from the group, or I have a question for Gary. Yeah. Um, do you you do, do, to take a picture with the uh, digital camera? Do you need a mount for that? Or depends on how long you're gonna what you're gonna shoot and how long. Okay. Um, let's say you have like a 35 millimeter lens. You mm -hmm. want to take a picture of this guy? Yes, you can. The longer. Um, there's only so many seconds before the stars will trail. Right. There's rules. I think that's the 500 rule they call it. There's a mathematical calculation online that they have, but I believe it's the 500 mm -hmm. rule. Yeah, it, you get to a point. It also depends on the focal length that you're using. If yes. you're using a lens on the camera, the wider that you go, obviously, the the longer you can you can keep it open. But it, I think even with uh, an extreme wide, I think you're limited to about 15 or 20 seconds roughly in the field in, yeah. in the field yeah that, and then after that you're going to start to get some uh okay. fairly visible trailing mm -hmm. okay but you know what if we're going to have a naked eye comment coming Thank up you, Patrick. any photo is a good photo <laughs> yeah really really mm -hmm. that's it's it's a, a tremendous opportunity for anybody to take a look and go see it would we be able to to do any let alone not, not just still but video of a naked eye comet yeah, you can actually, actually, um, I guess, yes and no. You got to look at it, I guess, two different ways. Sometimes you see a video, but it's actually mm -hmm. just a symbol. A, a, um, a, somebody actually took, let's say, 100 images and stitched them together to be a video. Right. But I was, I was thinking of something just directly, you know, putting a camera on a tripod and if it's bright turning enough, it on I video think, mode and going, you know, zap and just following yeah. it with a few piece you know what if it's bright enough i don't see why you couldn't um over okay. the years i mean i've taken my my little point and shoot camera put it in video mode and just mm -hmm. put it on top of my telescope um and, and, and i can video whatever's there i know because one, one of the great regrets i've I, i've had was when hell bop was out that we didn't do any video because it, the sight of that thing through yeah. our scope on the hill mm -hmm was absolutely mind boggling. Yeah. You know, it 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 it, it looked like a sonogram is, is the best way I could analyze or analyze the the view for you. It, it it appeared to have four different nuclei or clusters and there was like a, a visible movement of, of what appeared to be particles around those for nuclei, okay. um, it, 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 when I say it looked like a, a sonar, it really did. I mean, the, the best comparison would be uh, for what that looked like. At least the, the the particulate movement would be what it looked like, what you would see in a sonogram. Hmm. It's pretty cool. Oh, it was astonishing. You'd be curious too. I mean, even if we piggybacked it on the telescope somewhere, you know, put a lens. Yeah. 
and yeah. see what, what it actually would do. So again, it has to be bright enough, naked eye brightness. Should be interesting to see. Do we have a, a, a piggyback mount on our scope? Uh, it, 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 or is that to be not done the, later? Not at the time, uh, Warren, no, we, 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 we don't, okay. Yeah, it, would, it would be very, it would be relatively easy to do, but we do not have one. We don't have it now, okay, just curious. We're just doing questions now, they're pretty much done. Why not? Hi, is that somebody? Is somebody trying to ask a question? Betsy? Might be just a uh, background conversation. Huh? All right, well, that was, that was great. Um, Thank you, Thank you Gary. Very again. Much for this. Say again. Thank you very much. It was great. That was oh, great. Yeah. You're certainly welcome. Thank you. Yeah, this is a home run, especially when there's nothing to do. You know, we're all stuck in our houses, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Frank, are you saying it's better than nothing? Is that what you're saying? Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> wearing the mask, it's you know, it's, it's good. It's good to do this. It's it's because you know we lose Absolutely so much contact agree. with each other. You know, yeah. and this is nice to see yes, other people. Is. And, and, and <laughs> actually, and if I may, it's nice to see the members, especially to see everybody. Uh, out up and healthy and all that and all yeah. our guests too hope, hope you all continue to stay uh, healthy yeah. and safe but the nice thing too is i mean we're kind of tied to our houses but astronomy you can go outside and just go look up yeah you, know, you go outside it doesn't cost you anything take a look and see what's out there uh just curiosity you can ask you can always post a question to us to say hey what is that in the sky most yeah. likely we'll say it's venus but uh you know <laughs> always feel you know, better when you're looking up right right Gary? yeah you always feel better when you're looking up I was, just, I was I was stunned at how easy it was to join this. I'm a technological idiot, and I, I just clicking on the, the line in the uh, in the email and then following the directions, it was like, holy crow! I'm I'm on. I can see myself and I can hear myself. I, I, <laughs> that's incredible. It was so it was so simple. When did we, age. Mike? When did we? When did this start? Eight o'clock or the, yeah, the, Warren, eight. Just about so oh, a few minutes after, a few minutes. Yeah, later. I was a little late to the party. I, I forgot about it for a minute, and okay. my wife uh, Much better. reminded me. So, well, good. Glad you made it. That's all. I'm glad we're here. Always a pleasure to see you, Warren. Same here, Dan. Thanks. And speaking of Dan, yeah. Speaking of Dan, speaking the of Dan. John. Uh, so, what are we going to look at? Yeah, do you want to go at, on? Yeah, let's let's uh, discuss. And in Gary's vein of the comet, if I do this correctly, and lose you guys. Nice sweet segue there, Warren. Thanks. Right, <laughs> and you should be seeing um, an image of Good. the sky live, right? Comet Swan. That's where it is right now mm. on the horizon. Right. So yeah. as um, as we move through time, uh, Gary, you said that's going to be uh, visible in the morning. It's early. Yeah, it's early morning. Um, right. right now, you have to contend with the moon. I believe the moon is out of the sky about the nineteenth of the month. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you get up now, the moon comes up probably about two ish, three o'clock, two thirty ish in the morning. Two forty five. Two forty five. Okay. Yeah. Good. That's going to be one of my talking points. What time the moon comes up? So yeah, somewhere. Um, in a couple of weeks, we should be able to see Comet Swan. And this is a great um, uh, website, theskylive.com, mm -hmm. where you could go and mm. give you the whole uh, view of where you should look. So um, that's, that's, a, that's a real nice image, Dan. Right? It's amazing what you can find on the internets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, we're going to go. Uh, so. So everybody's stuck at home, right? And you know, we say everybody should know where north, south, east, and west is at their home. Yes, uh, it, it, it's it sounds like it's a no-brainer, but sometimes you just don't realize it. Anyway, the sun always rises in the east, right? The sun always rises in the east, which is that way for me. The sun always sets in the west, which is that way for me. So if I stand like this where the sun is going, I'm facing north and south is behind me. So that's one way 
uh, you can figure out where you are. Another way is I don't have my phone with me, but there's an app for that. Um, I have a Compass app, so uh, and and that's very helpful when you have to find something in the sky. If somebody says look northwest, well, first you have to know where north is, so you can figure out where northwest is. Um, so everybody should in this time where we're not rushing to get everywhere, um, figure out where the sun rises and sets on your property. So you know where you're going. Um, so at this point in time of the night, there's really not a whole heck of a lot up uh, other than deep sky, uh, other than Venus. Uh, so if you don't have a telescope, it's not really a whole lot to, to be looking at other than you know the constellations of the asterisms the moon rises at 245 jupiter rises at 1235 saturn rises at 1250 um so unless you're a night owl or unless you wake up really early well it's uh, you know before 5 a.m um, you're not going to see any of the major planets um or the moon uh so what are you going to look at well everybody can look up and everybody can look north and everybody can see the Big Dipper, right? I'm gonna try this again, this whole sharing thing. Uh, everybody can see the Big Dipper and the Big Dipper can get you any number of places, right? The Big Dipper is right there. It's part of, uh, it's not right there because I'm not sharing my screen. <laughs> The Big Dipper is right there, right? There Everybody sees that? Yep. Okay. Got it now. So now the Big Dipper isn't a constellation in and of itself. It's called an asterism, mm -hmm. right? It's uh, it's part of a constellation or it's a grouping of stars or part of a grouping of stars um, that people can recognize. Not too many people. I, I know that when Gary moved his mouse, audio dropped, so I'm going to try not to move my mouse much. But you don't realize that the bear has a nose and the bear has, uh, the Big Dipper has a nose and, and well, three legs in this instance. Um, <laughs> everybody just sees the Dipper, uh, but it's actually part of Ursa Major, which is um, the great bear. And you know, up, you, until, up until now, I always thought Ursa Major was, was the Big Dipper. The Big Dipper. I didn't realize no, it had more to it. It has a lot more to it. Um, and if you take these two stars, and everybody should know this, and I will do this. Um, do this, everybody can see that, mm -hmm. right? You can say these two end, end bucket stars will point to the North Star, which looks a lot brighter here on this, on this <laughs> image yeah. than it really is. The North Star is, is almost difficult to spot. Um, if there's a full moon out, um, it, it's very difficult to spot. So it's just an average star. It's nothing spectacular. It just happens to be at almost true celestial north. Uh, it's not quite. It, it, uh, it's, it's just a tiny bit off. But you can use the Big Dipper to go any number of places, as you can see. Uh, the, you know, the two, if you're take those two bucket stars and go down, you're in, in um, the constellation of Leo. Uh, Regulus, is a, is, Regulus is a bright star as opposed to the way Polaris is shown here. Uh, Regulus is a brighter star. Um, the Arc to Arcturus, which is another bright, bright star in the constellation of Baotes. And um, yeah, I mean, this is a very, you know, dense graphic, but you can use that Big Dipper, that simple Big Dipper uh, asterism to find yourself uh, any number of places mm -hmm. in the sky. Dan, uh, now Polaris hasn't always been the North Star. There have been other ones, I think. Correct. Wasn't Vega, I think, and Regulus. And... and you're putting me on the spot, Warren. No, no. I, 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 you I, should I, have given ago. me this question before, so I, I could have... I, I apologize for that. I, um, I, I'll put a bag over my head. I just was no, but I, you're I'm right. just trying to figure out which ones were, if, if anybody knew. Hey, Dan, I, I, I can actually help him with that a little bit, too, if you want. 
Go ahead. Um, but he's correct in what he's saying is um, the Earth actually wobbles it's in its yeah. orbit. Yes, so we have a recession. The recession is 26,000 years, every 26,000 years. So um, yes, he's, um, I know you figured the North Star is in there. Um, also too, I believe the next one is going to be Alpha Cephia. That's Alderman. It was one. Vega oh, was wow. the far. If you go outside, if you, um, I have a, a map I, that actually tells me the pole stars. If you want, I can get it if you want to wait a minute. Um, but if you go outside, sometimes I'll look up and I'll look at these stars and I'll try to visualize like this big circle. Mm -hmm. It's but it'd be 26 degrees across. Wow. It's pretty That's big. cool. That's very yeah. cool. But it's 20, it's 26,000 years that procession takes place. Right now, we just yeah. happen to be, Polaris happens to be close to the north, very close to the actual true uh, north. True north, yeah. True north. When we do polar alignments to take pictures, everything has to be lined up on Polaris. Okay. We're in the north. The south isn't as lucky. They don't have a star just sitting. Well, they've got the Southern Cross, but that's that's like an asterism. It's kind of kind of close, I guess, right? Not as close as what we have, though. We're, no, no, okay. Joe's yeah, a little shy, easy. but he, he's he's got a couple of stars correct. Thuban and Vega. Yes, Thuban, incorrect. Thuban is the other one. It's Alpha Draconis. Part of the hmm. Back to you, Mike. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry, Dan. Yep. Oh, okay. Back to me. Um, <laughs> I have um, one thing I really like to look at is the moon. And unfortunately, like I said, it, it's up at like 2.45 this morning. Um, so it's difficult. Uh, but I spend hours just with a pair of binoculars in, a, in a, um, a lawn chair on my deck when the moon is in the right position. And I'm just just looking at it, it I, I'm in awe of the moon. I love, uh, <laughs> it's, it, it's just so easy to, to spot. And if you just train your eye on any one spot of it, it's just a breathtaking, right? Magnificent desolation as, um, as uh, Buzz said. Yeah. Um, I have a few moon shots here that I took um, that I can, I can share. Um, and I'll show you my, my rig, which is very simple, but, um, I have that one. Um, and obviously it, it's, it's not in the right orientation, but you can see that, right? You got my preview screen there. Yep. And yeah. It looks great. Oh, that's awesome. got this one. Um, and you can see on the edge here. It's it's um it's pretty much in focus. I like that picture a lot. Mm, that's good. Um, I'm sorry. It's um. There you go. But the, are those this, white dots mountain peaks? Uh, you're gonna hit me with the white dots. Uh, <laughs> those. Am I still sharing my screen? Am I? No. Uh, okay. No. So, hang on. Those. Uh, some of those white dots are actually dead pixels in my imager. Oh, okay. Okay, so if you see, like here where my mouse is pointing, there's a dead pixel and there's a dead pixel. And right, right. They, you know, they just show white. Um, and I'll show you why. I, have I think so on the moon, though, on the, on the surface, there were, there were some brighter spots. Oh, they I, could have been. Uh, no, but I think those are actually, those are newer newer craters i think those are just very oh, okay. bright. They're not very big but they're very bright craters i think okay. that's what you were seeing all right so my rig is very simple it's an old nikon cool pics camera right mm. it's uh from seven it's 17 years old <laughs> wow and i have right and i have um my mount that screws on to my eyepiece mm. Right, so I do basically what Gary does with his phone, but my um, rig looks like this. And instead of my eye, I focus on the screen in the back. Um, and that's how I'm taking shots of hmm. uh, what I shoot. And mainly it's the moon only because my rig is so old and not very sensitive. And I don't have a motorized mount on my scope, so. Uh, the moon's an easy target. Uh, anyway, um, 
I don't remember what else I was supposed to talk about. <laughs> oh, um, moon stuff. Moon stuff. Average distance for us is about 238,000 miles. It takes about 1.2 seconds for light to go between Earth and the moon. Uh, it's about four and a half billion years old. My best Carl Sagan impersonation, billion. Um, <laughs> Good one. And um, it was first visited by um, mankind um, or by a man-made object in 1959. And obviously we all know that in 1969, uh, Neil uh, Armstrong set foot on the moon. I have to plug a website because I find it is fascinating. It's called apolloinrealtime.org. Um, just apolloinrealtime.org. They have three full length Apollo missions, 11, 13, and 14 up. And, you, and it's from two hours before launch until the, the guys splash down and get to the, um, um, aircraft carrier. They have all the NASA audio tapes. They have all as much NASA footage as possible. Um, 11 is just chock full of information and it's just a great website. Um, back in July, I had the Apollo 11 mission on and it was just ex as exciting listening to it 50 years later as it was watching it live in 69. Uh, it was really, really cool. Uh, so I, I have to plug that website. It, uh, Dan, I, I agree that uh, I checked that out after you mentioned it. And it's, it is yeah, and, the mm. Apollo, and they have the Apollo 13 mission and you can hear Lovell and Hayes and, and they just sound like so uh, just in control of being not in control. It, it's, uh, it's wild uh, to hear the tone of their voice. Uh, it's, it's nothing like Tom Hanks. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so uh, I, I, would, I would go for that. Anything, anyway. Um, the moon has about one sixth the gravity or one fifth the gravity that we have. So if you weigh a hundred pounds on earth, you weigh about 15 pounds or 16 pounds on the moon which I guess is good, uh, but it's all relative. Um, it is the, the fifth largest moon in the solar system. Uh, so it's not the largest moon. It's not the smallest moon. It's, it's an average size moon, like where we have an average size sun. Um, and there's only been so far 12 people to ever walk on the moon. And hopefully within our lifetimes, we may see 13, 14, 15, 16. Fingers crossed. It's supposed to be uh, women. I, it doesn't matter who, just, just more human beings. We need more human beings on the moon. Um, li like I said, I, I really didn't, there's not really much in the sky to look at because everything rises so early in the morning. So unless you have a scope, um, not a lot of naked eye stuff, sorry. Now, Dan, that's just for now, right? Given the season that we're in? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually in the winter is the, the better seasons. Um, things rise more so at night. And, but and some of the later on in the year, the planets, some of the other la planets. Later on in the year, the planets will be up, up at night as well because, you know, we'll move in our orbit and they'll move in theirs and things will turn around. So, but right at this point in time, we're all stuck in the house. Go outside and you know um, use the Big Dipper and look for other things. Mm -hmm. I wish I had more. Thanks. Well, thanks. <laughs> thanks. And it was great. That was a great job. I don't know if any. Again, before we move on or anything, is any any questions on any of that uh, from anybody or any anything you need to amplify? Or anything? Oh, going back just a bit, Gary. That that comet shot that you got. Do you know where you got that from? Um, How much one? Let me think. That may have been um, Sky and Telescope site, possibly, or it was Space Weather. One of the two. Okay, thanks. I just want to. Space Weather, you have to dig because you probably have to go under comets 
All right. I just wanted. I was just curious if it was if it was properly available because for the column, it'd be a great, you know, great lead. So it's shot. it's a, it's available. Yes, that much I know. Great. That's good. That, um, it, that's what I need to know. Thanks. Got that. Um, and also too, that may have made one of the um, astronomy picture of the days. NASA. Image of the day, NASA. Astronomy okay. picture of the day. That may have may, may have been very recent too. Well, actually, Mike, I got a, a question for you. I, you have a great background there. Where did you get that? Oh, thanks, Warren. Yeah, thank you. Um, that I took um, using a remote control <laughs> telescope through um, an outfit called Eye Telescope. Uh huh. And um, they're based. They're based in Europe. I'm not sure exactly where. The particular telescope I used for this was uh, in Spain. They have a number of dark site mm -hmm. areas in. Uh, have, again, they have in Spain and uh, Arizona, Australia, uh, a few others. I'm, I'm not sure exactly where uh, at the moment. But uh, and you can rent time. You can you know join up. You come and right. Better, right. You pay. You can you know they have different levels of of, uh, of of pricing. You know a tiered structure that allows you to. Um, get extra time on the scopes. Mm -hmm. And again, they have larger, again, depending mm -hmm. on the instrumentation on the scope and the size of the scope and the type of mounting it has, use so many, you know, it's like a point system. Mm -hmm. It has so many points is, for so many minutes. And, and is, uh, the is what's behind you, is that a print or is it a projection or is it an astronomical it's, thing um, that's in the computer? It's, it's a JPEG that I, I that I got, that I built with from the RAWs that yeah. I took at the telescope and then I, you know, use, uh, you know, the typical type of pr post-processing that you do. And I just saved that to my local desktop. And uh, in Zoom, you're uh, you're able to- uh, use, use that as a background. Use that as a backdrop, yeah. Great, I'm a little, okay, I'm a little freaky because my, the computer I'm on doesn't really have the processing horsepower to fully, dis you know, discriminate between me and then the, the green- Well, yeah, I, I can see your, there's on my screen anyhow, there's your shirt breaks up just a little yeah, bit. Any, anything that's in a shadow, it kind of interprets as that same background color. So the, so mm -hmm. the background kind of bleeds okay. through. So I'm, uh, you know, but it's gorgeous. This, I just I'm have to get a better computer, I guess. <laughs> I just look at it. It looks, it looks, it looks absolutely great. But I tell you, it, it, it was, it was, um, there were some people I think, uh, Warren, that have a little problem with it, but, you know, because, um, uh, you know, they think, oh no, you've got to buy your own equipment, and you've got to be, you know, behind the camera, and you've got to be out there in the cold and. Uh, and uh, no, no. You, know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> you figure out how to make a great image for this, and you and you use it. I mean. Yeah, that's... but but this is, you know, and you get to set the parameters. You know, you get to set the times, and you know, you you can do the, the the flats and the bias frames, and you know, they can calibrate them for you. Um, and they have some great filters. And they have some great telescopes and some great mounts. Um, and but you know, you you decide the parameters for the photo and then you know you do the post-processing and it's, that's, it's it's just a beautiful image and and, yeah. and, and again it's like I, I you know i i'd never be able to do a shot like that you know because of the equipment and because of the light pollution and everything else you know that yeah. we, we have here you know so and showing off yeah so that's called i it is called i <laughs> telescope and um it's an interesting, yeah. You, you know, if you're if you're interested, you should you know, take a look at it. I think, yeah. You know, the first month you can get in like for like forty bucks or something like that. Yeah. Hundred, you know. I mean, if you want to go, maybe a hundred bucks, you can probably get a decent shot. Mm -hmm. So, thank you. So I have a sorry. Go ahead. I'm I'm sorry. I have a question about Ooh. the moon. Yes. Um, so this is the first time I come to this group, but um, so so I always wonder, um, let, like, say, for example, if I was on the moon and I was to look at Earth, like, what would be the magnitude that I would see? Like, how, what size uh, would I see? How would I see the Earth? Like, as um, something similar to the size of the moon, because the moon... It's very small compared to the, it's much smaller than the earth. Yeah. So yes. I'm wondering like of what size will I see the earth in front of me? It, 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 yes. Well, I guess the, the earth from the moon would appear bigger than the moon appears to us. I'm not sure what the angular size would be. The, the moon from the earth is about a half a degree. I would yep. think from the moon, the earth would be, I don't know. Well, a degree, anybody, a degree have an and idea? a half. Yeah, I, I would recommend one thing. If you going back to Apollo, the picture Earthrise that they took on 
it was it Apollo 8 or Apollo 11? I don't know. But yeah. there's a picture of the Earth, like a half Earth, rising over the lunar surface while they were in orbit around the moon. Mm. Um, you know, that might, yeah, there you go. Mm. I'm not sure if that gives a real feel for the scale, but yeah, yeah. But, um, but I think the, it would be, it would certainly be noticeable. It would be very bright because of the clouds and the oceans. And uh, I'm not sure, like as I said, angular diameter what it would be, but it would be considerably larger than the moon appears to us. Um, and interesting, I think, and again, I, again, I want to say this right. It would be the from the moon. The Earth would be the opposite phase that we see the moon in at that same time. Ah, good point. Right. So if we were looking yeah. at a full moon, you'd, you'd see a new Earth and vice versa. Right. The, the moon's about a, a quarter of the radius of uh, of the Earth, so it would be. All right. um, they look uh, four times as wide, I guess. So okay. two degrees. Yeah, four times that. as wide as what uh, what we see of the moon. Yes. yes. Yep. This is pretty big. Yep. Do do they have a lot of pictures of the Earth Probably that were taken in from the moon? Um, I, I think if you went on and googled, you know, pick, you know, images of. The That's what I just moon, did. You'd probably find quite a few. Okay, thank you. I mean, again, that a lot of them. I think probably more of them are from uh, when the astronauts were in orbit around the moon, rather than while they were on the moon. Because I think while they were on the moon, I mean, they might have taken yeah. a couple of pictures of the Earth, but I think they were, you know, their time there was very limited, and they had a really tight schedule. So I, I don't think they had a lot of time for, for for that kind of activity. I think they did like this picture that we're seeing mm -hmm. right now. I think. These are taken from the uh, spacecraft while they're in orbit. So there are a lot of pictures like that. Guys, how but again, the size would be about the same. How, the, the last mission, they, they stayed for a lot longer than obviously Apollo 11 did. What's the longest time that up till now that they spent at, at, in one shot on the moon? Anybody have any information on that? Is it like an overnight? Yeah, days? overnight, I think maybe two days one. Just two days? Okay. Uh, maybe longer. I'm, that's a good question. I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah, because you're Aurora Borealis by mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the, latter, the later missions, they stayed for, I think, in a, a pretty good extended period. I don't, yeah, I don't, I think, remember I don't they, think as much as three days, but a couple of days. Yeah, okay. Mike, so in Stellarium, you can actually go to other planets. So this is... Ah, perfect, uh, Nick. Ignore the grass. Ah, There's no good grass Nick. on the moon, obviously, but <laughs> <laughs> yes. this, this would be... You know, if there were grass and trees on the moon, this is what it would look like. <laughs> <laughs> well, we go up there, we put up a dome, we uh, start uh, planting, and who knows? Sure. Hey, Dan, you got the aurora borealis on behind you. Yep. That's pretty cool. So I hope that helped you. That was in uh, Zoom. Yeah, it says awesome. they spent like 33 and a half hours on the moon and nine and a half hours EVA, Apollo 14. Hmm. Wow, it's a long time. So AD, is that your name? I, I apologize if I... Uh, yes, I did. It's fine, AD. It's fine. All right, thank you. Uh, that... Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, this is pretty good. First time mm -hmm. I join you. What's the galaxy behind you on that um, image that you have? Yes. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a photo of the Andromeda galaxy. Andromeda, yeah, of course. Beautiful. Did, did anybody hear that they, they did a re-estimation of the size of uh, the galaxy? And they say it's a lot closer to, the, to our size than they thought before? Yeah, yeah, there's a very large extended halo, right? That yeah, and they, they say it's actually oh, not, not, a, not a whole lot larger than the Milky Way now, they think. Yeah, that's true. Less to bump into. When we finally hit <laughs> in a few billion years. Okay. So this Any is other? A, this is a photo I took of Andromeda, um, the same one as oh, Mike's. Wow. This is from oh. New Jersey. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, nice. It's Nick. Nick. Oh. Nick's picture. With the you know, with processing and, and long exposures, you can you can still hey. get detail out of things. Come here. That's beautiful. That is that's awesome. awesome. Nick, Nick, I, can't, I can't. I can't compare with Nick. Nick, that's, that's amazing. That's, that's, but that's how it looks in New Hampshire, Frank. Yeah. Now you've got another galaxy. It looks like to the lower and to the right of. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Right, yeah, get two. So one satellite one galaxy, galaxy Andromeda. Yeah. This one here. It's a picture. All right, and this one. You can see them both through a telescope, also. Yeah, those are the satellite galaxies. Yeah. Andromeda. Oh, Lord. Beautiful. Awesome. Yeah, that's a nice. That's a nice. Awesome. Shot. Absolutely yeah. awesome. That's and all those other stars. Yeah. Those are all stars in our galaxy that are, you know, in the foreground. Mm -hmm. Nick, Nick, can you go through your process of what you did to get the shot? Oh, this was so long ago. Um, uh, so it used to be recorded on. There's a good website. Um, I forget the name of it, but they had a they had a database problem and all the info got lost, so I can't even look it up. Astro um, Ben. Astro Ben, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I haven't I haven't had the time to put my stuff back up there yet. But this is probably at least an hour worth of exposures. Wow. Yeah, I don't I don't think mine was like maybe. 20 minutes altogether the whole not even and, yeah. and nick you did you did um a ser you did filters you did a, a color wheel filters or just color filters you didn't do it no this shot. is with the dslr so color, oh. color camera so this was a color camera okay. one set of exposures yeah okay nick how right, large so is the scope this was my 72 millimeter refractor wow mm. and how nick, long was each exposure? glorious uh I can see if I can, I don't even have the. You don't even have the, the me metadata there. Cause you're saying it's about an hour's worth of exposures, but. Yeah. How many, how many pictures, uh, you know, is it, is it a five second exposure or a 10 second exposure? Or a, it's probably a second a minute, exposure. A minute minutes exposure. Let me okay. try to, uh, try to find the raw data. Hang on a second. Okay, so this is from 2013, it looks like. Hmm. It's probably moved a lot since then. Yeah. The, um, you, got, you got the, uh, uh, the, the file name. Well, it's got, all the way 20, here now, Dan. Yeah, 20, exactly. You got 2013. Uh, looks like you were up. Uh, yeah. So these are... Looks like five-minute exposures, actually. And there's uh, it's about 15 or 20 of them. Was that from Sheep Hill? I believe so. Yeah. Wow. In Boonton. Okay. Wow. That's a phenomenal picture. That's, that's just breathtaking. Must have been cold that night. <laughs> uh, let's see. Look, December? Yeah, it probably was cold. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> it's super clear. I mean, it's. Yeah, it is. It is, it is clean. Yeah, it's like it's it is clean. Gary's kind of night. Yeah, thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> a little cold, never hurt anybody. Come on, yeah. bundle up. Never hurt you, man. I don't know. Bundle up. <laughs> You're savage. <laughs> uh, that's, I got some some of one of our other members' uh, pictures to share. Oh, you have well. Dan's pictures, right? Yeah, Dan Silver. Um, let's see here. Um, here he's got this is the comet atlas uh 29 wow. uh 2019 y4 atlas mm -hmm. it's called and this is actually before it broke up um so now it's well that is nice and green pat yeah so this is um this is actually broken up recently so now it's in like five fragments or five main fragments yeah um the green i was thinking about before with the gas was cyanogen oh ah, okay Cyan okay but mm -hmm. maybe i know i've heard of it in comments and i think uh yeah. this is in perseus now i don't know if it, where it was then um i don't know if i don't know if um i don't have a uh, the sky live uh um, snapshot to, to put on there, but uh, we have this one, uh, and he's also got a couple of galaxy pictures as well. This is M81 and 82. These were taken from Denville, um, so not far from uh, the observatory. That's that's pretty nice. Those are good. Yeah, those yeah. are really nice. A lot yeah, of detail. Really nice. You can see the, the breakup in M82. Yeah. So, um, let me get my notes straight here. So 
So the one on the left is uh, M81. It's called uh, Bodhi's Galaxy. Um, that is, this is M80, M81, M82 called the Cigar Galaxy. Hmm. Uh, so this one is, um, this one's about, the one on the right's about a, about 20,000 light years across. This one's about 90,000 light years across. Um, it's a great shot. You can see yeah. the hmm. arms in the spiral. Yeah, the spir spiral galaxy, the galaxy looks great. Yeah. Um, let's see here. And we got one more, which is a close up of uh, M81. This is the, the one on the left there. So, wow. Uh, wow. So, again, from Denville. So, uh, I don't have, don't have, I don't have any other details on uh, on his exposures or anything like that, but uh, he shared with the group, so we could uh, we could put wow. up here. That's really cool. So this is um, uh, these both of these galaxies are in or near uh, Ursa Major, so they're sort of uh, if you look at the 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 entire the um, the entire constellation. Uh, Dan showed that earlier, how, or maybe it was uh, yeah no yeah it was Dan. Um, who showed that the Big Dipper actually has a nose and some legs. Um, so these two are sort of above the head of the bear. So um, towards uh, uh, a little closer to the, to the North Star. So. Those are really and, nice. Damn. Yeah. All right. Nice. Thank you, Pat. That's nice. Sure. Um, there was a couple. Okay, it was. I think we're gonna we kind of skipped over something, but I think we're gonna leave that for maybe for our next time. Um, that's mm -hmm. kind of the end of our planned program, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, if there again, if there are any questions from anybody online. Um, we can try to entertain those uh, if anybody has any more comments or if there's anything else that anybody else cares to share if anybody has any other photos or other information that they want to share with the group uh, this is where atlas is right now mm -hmm. so that, that's what i'm going to ask did you have three comets atlas a smart and swan hmm. yeah there's yes. three or four visible in the sky they're just kind of hard to see um, i know this one and he's pointing at atlas now uh that was the one they were talking about earlier that did break up a bit very hard to find, at least from my home. Light pollution killed it. Mm. Yeah, it was supposed to be the next latest and greatest to, uh, you know, get super bright, and then it wound yeah. up. Unfortunately, that uh, happens. Yeah. We'll see what happens with Comet Swan. Yeah, let's hope uh, it actually lives up to expectations or hopes. It did for exactly. out. <laughs> What's that? It did for the Southern Hemisphere. Yes, you're right. It did. Hopefully it gets brighter like they say it's going to and it be, becomes a naked eye object. That'd be nice. Yeah. Uh, what was the times for the ISS? Uh, I forget who. 1027, it was supposed to rise. 1027. Yeah. 1027. Was it northwest, southeast? West, southwest. West, southwest. Okay. It's towards the northeast. Cool. Six minutes. Looks like about an hour from now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. That's long. That's long. All right. Don't forget to wave to him, okay? That was <laughs> <laughs> good. Just on the, the subject, I guess, of the, this, the space station, something I'd read, I also follow because uh, I go to Frosty Drew Observatory in Rhode Island. And uh, last week he streams live on the Friday nights also. And um, last night, or last week he was talking about uh, um, one of the astronomers he had was, uh, had gone to the, the, the observatory up there in Rhode Island. And uh, the woman had come to visit him. The woman's dad was actually on the space station. So as the space station flew over, 
he actually was calling her saying, hey, I'm flying over your head right now. And the astronomer, she gave the phone to the astronomer just to talk to the astronauts. It was really, really neat story. That's very cool. And he ended up, the astronaut actually sent them a picture of Rhode Island. <laughs> you know, when, when next pass, when they came by during the day, he sent a picture of that area of where they were up in uh, Providence. Neat. It was really, a really neat story. Okay. Well, I'm going to close out, fellas. Well, thank you very yeah. much. Hang Thanks on. Going for, <laughs> <laughs> okay. for five more minutes. All right. Thanks. All right. Thanks again. It was, right. thank I you. enjoyed it. Thank well, you for being here. I Thanks think we're going to. I, I think we're going to get ready to make. May, maybe we're, we're heading towards wrapping up um, in the evening. And I'll I'll just put a a pitch out there for our website, which is um, sheephillastro.org. I uh, hope you'll come and visit that. Um, that and our Facebook page is the primary uh, ways, I guess, to, to see us, that and uh, the YouTube. Oh, I should mention also, um, Dan has been uh, putting out, uh, we're trying to put them out maybe every two weeks or so. Some Every two weeks, yeah. Another one should be coming. I got to start working on a script. Some YouTube. Uh, Next week. <laughs> Yeah, some YouTube videos about you know what's up at the sky now. But again, if you could visit our uh, our, our website at sheephillastro.org and particularly our donations page, um, we're um, we are looking to still gather some funds. We need we need some badly needed repairs to the uh, observatory dome. We've really gotten uh, a long ways toward reaching our goal, but uh, we're still not quite there. So again, just um, just put a pitch out there. That's all. Um, so thank you. Um, I want to thank all the members uh, who contributed tonight uh, and every night uh, to the club and to the organization and all our guests tonight. Uh, thank you for uh, showing your interest and uh, asking such great questions and um, just, just, just being here. And um, again, I'll just throw it open one last time. If there's any, anything else that anybody cares to, to share or comment on before we. One more thing about the moon. Okay. The whole uh, idea of people behaving um, more psychotically or criminally during a full moon has been disproven by a number of studies. So a full moon will not make you crazy. I don't know, Dan. I don't know. You say so. I don't know about that. Sounds like, hey. sounds like fake news. There you go. <laughs> All I can say is we have to get the word lunatic from I, somewhere. I think yeah. you're right, Dave. Oh. That's it. Yep. So All you right, can find you can find uh, on our website. You can find uh, a link to to PayPal for um, yeah, real wolf. Uh, for for donations. Uh, there's also a link to I posted in the chat. Um, we uh, we're also on Amazon Smiles, uh, which is sort of a fundraiser um, Thank you, Pat. that we go through with Amazon. Um, where you basically a, a portion of uh, of very a small portion of profits uh, from your Amazon uh, Christmas shopping or where, whatever kind of shopping can uh, you know, toilet uh, paper shopping yeah <laughs> that too <Yeah. laughs> will be uh, will be passed along to uh, to to us so um, there's a link there in the uh, in the chat uh, the group chat um, and you can also find a PayPal link there and a PayPal link on our website. So. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Thank you, Warren. Yeah, thanks, thanks for everyone. coming, everybody. Right, everyone, right. have a good night. And right, good night, we'll everybody. See, we'll we'll let you, maybe we'll see you in another month. No. <laughs> see you, Gary, Warren. Take care. Bye, everybody. Bye. Have a good night. Bye.